Let's talk about Randy Orton. Orton is one of the most tenured and respected wrestlers in the WWE locker room, and Orton has been out of action for the second half of 2022 with a serious back injury. This injury appears to be one of the worst injuries of Orton's career, and there is serious concern about his wrestling future. Although Orton has only been gone for around six months, his absence on Raw is apparent, and it's time to fully address why WWE is badly missed their resident viper. What makes Orton so special? Why is he so loved and respected by fans as well as the locker room? Well, to examine this, a career retrospective is in order, but before we get underway, this quote from former WWE Champion Kofi Kingston highlights just how unique of a performer Orton is. Kingston stated in an interview with the Daily Star, As far as Randy is concerned, I think he has the ability to do so many things so well. He looks a certain way. He flexes in a certain way. You feel that. That's stuff that makes you great and not just good. What Randy does is unique in that way. He does so much without doing anything at all. So I'd have to put him in the conversation as being one of the greatest. To be able to last that long, he's even more compelling now in a lot of different ways. So, as a performer, you can't have a conversation about the greatest without having Randy be in there, from the longevity alone. What a quote by Kofi Kingston. Orton began his main roster career in 2002. Orton would debut on SmackDown without a character and without any presence whatsoever as a wrestler. This would all change, however, when WWE made the executive call to have Orton be a part of the Evolution stable. The Evolution faction was the mastermind of Triple H and Ric Flair who wanted to put a stable together featuring themselves along with two up and coming stars. This was basically a modern day version of the Four Horsemen, but nobody could have ever predicted just how successful the stable would eventually become. Initial plans called for Orin to be paired in the stable with Mark Jindrak, however it was the game who made the call to switch out Jindrak with Batista, which was without question the correct move. Orin's work in the stable was tremendous. Orin began to come out of his shell and his character evolved, no pun intended, into the Legend Killer. The Legend Killer persona was one of the standout gimmicks of the Ruthless Aggression era and centered on Orin taking aim at Legends on the way to the top of the WWE card. The gimmick truly took off when Orin began a feud with the legendary Mick Foley in the year of 2003. Foley had previously helped talents such as The Rock and Triple H ascend to elite level status and now Foley was tasked with doing the same for Orton. The feud was compelling and drawn out over a series of months. While the feud was firmly about presenting Orton as the next big thing, Foley also brought his A-game and made fans realize just how truly great he was. The feud would come to a close at Backlash in 2004 when Orin defeated Foley in one of the most brutal WWE matches in the history of the company. Orton had arrived after this match as fans now saw him as a credible, legitimate contender for WWE's top spot in the company and this would be something that WWE had every intention of following up on. At the SummerSlam pay-per-view in 2004, WWE made the drastic decision to crown Orton as their new world champion. In the process, Orton would become the youngest champion in the company history and subsequently became the face of Monday Night Raw. There was a ton of debate at the time if Orton was ready for this because fans assumed that Orton would collide with Triple H at WrestleMania 21 and that's where Orton's ascension to the top would begin but WWE hastily hotshotted Orton's main event push at SummerSlam. Orton would defeat Chris Benoit in the main event of SummerSlam and it was the next night on Raw where things began to get problematic for the world champion. Evolution would turn on Randy with Triple H leading a beatdown on the new world champion. WWE's idea was to turn Orin into a babyface, but this completely flopped and Orin dropped the world title to Triple H just a few weeks later at the Unforgiven pay-per-view. This could have resulted in Orin's main event stay coming to an end as it was truly a complete failure, but this was at no fault of Orin as WWE had completely botched the execution. 
Around this time period, it was revealed that Orin wasn't the most popular star backstage. Orin was cocky, he was egotistical, and seemed to rub everyone the wrong way. Unfortunately for Orton, this attitude wouldn't change until his later years in WWE, and this turned a lot of fans against him. Luckily, Orton has been honest and open about his past failings, and he acknowledges how out of line his behavior was during the early days of his WWE career, and thankfully, it looks like Orton is in a much better place now. Following the horrendously executed babyface turn, WWE made the right decision to revert Orton back to a heel. Orton would then embark on a critically acclaimed feud with The Undertaker, which included an underrated match at WrestleMania 21. The two icons of WWE would collide throughout 2005, and it showed fans that Orton still had what it took to be a main eventer, and The Undertaker also deserves a ton of credit for putting Orton over with meaning and conviction. Orin would go through the years of 2005 and 2006 without a world title win, but in 2007, a shift changed where Orin would begin to seemingly win a world title every month. Vince McMahon seemingly overnight began to see Orin as the guy and subsequently over the next decade plus, Orin would win a groundbreaking 14 world titles with his final win coming in 2020 when he defeated Drew McIntyre at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Orton has had some outstanding feuds during his WWE career. While his feud with John Cena without question went on for far too long, fans who grew up watching WWE in 2007 through 2009 have fond memories of these two stars battling it out. A standout feud, and in my opinion the greatest feud of Orton's career, was his 2011 rivalry with Christian. Orton and Christian instantly clicked and the match quality the two delivered was like nothing either man had delivered before. Randy would go on to call working with Captain Charisma a career highlight and it wouldn't surprise me to see Orton suggest that Christian inducts him into the WWE Hall of Fame when his time comes. Orton has spoken extensively about how much love and respect he has for Christian and it would seem fitting that Orton's favorite opponent inducts him into the WWE's established class of greats. There is an element of Orin's career that fans never seem to discuss, and that is his ability and willingness to put over anyone in WWE. Throughout the WWE history, whenever WWE needed to push a lower card guy, Orton has seemingly been the one to put them over. Take for instance, in 2011, Orton put over Mark Henry during Henry's first and only world title reign. Then fast forward to 2017, and Orton put over Jinder Mahal on a pay-per-view for months. Bear in mind, Mahal was basically WWE's resident jobber who went from enhancement talent to WWE champion overnight. It's not a controversial statement to say that a number of WWE stars would have had a problem with putting Mahal over, but Orton did it. In fact, he did it with grace and care. Over the past few years, Orton has emerged as a locker room leader. WWE wrestlers such as Ricochet, Mad Cat Moss, and even Riddle have discussed how much the locker room loves Orton, and how Randy is always available to watch the matches and give fair and grounded advice. This is a far cry from the Orton that was in WWE 15 years ago, and this type of presence is badly needed in the WWE locker room currently. The WWE has undergone their biggest change ever as Vince McMahon has officially retired from WWE. Triple H has virtually taken over the day-to-day -day operations of Raw and SmackDown from a creative aspect and a veteran and level-headed individual like Orin is needed to help guide the young stars through this new era. Orton's pairing with Matt Riddle has helped show fans a new side of Randy. The RK Bro tag team has allowed Orin to just have fun and be himself for arguably the first time in his career. The pairing works because Orin and Riddle are polar opposites and it makes for a fun oddball tag team that is both hilarious and compelling to watch. During the tag team run, Orin has delivered some of the best work of his entire career and Orton is truly a gifted tag team star. It'll be interesting to see what happens with RK Bro upon Orton's return as it would be a massive shame to break up one of the most popular tag teams of the modern day era. Orton is badly missed in WWE. He brings a level of experience, legitimacy, and dependability that currently isn't present in WWE. Randy Orton makes every story, every match, and every segment mean something just by his name being attached to it alone, and I, as well as millions of wrestling fans around the world, cannot wait to see the future WWE Hall of Famer back in the squared circle. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.